Good evening, everyone. Please confirm if I'm audible to everyone or not. Good evening, sir. Yes, you're audible. All right. All right, everyone. So in the last class, uh, while discussing just we were talking about the calculation of hidden goodwill then we started this question yeah we were doing question number 116 right and in this question we were required to prepare the evaluation account i think we already completed the evaluation account and i have given you the formation of the partners capital account as homework and you were also required to prepare the balance sheet for this question so before moving forward, I just wanted to know whether you guys have completed this part or not. Tell me Alexander and everyone else, have you completed the remaining part of the question? Sir, uh, I had a doubt. You have a doubt, okay. Please tell me. Sir, the, uh, the sacrificing ratio is two is to three. And mm -hmm. if if both the partners are sacrificing, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. what what will be the treatment in the partners' capital account? If both the partners are sacrificing, then what will be the treatment? Treatment in, in you are asking about the treatment of what? Goodwill. Goodwill. So yes. I already we already the did the treatment of goodwill in the previous class huh? anyway see first of all says the goodwill of the firm is given in the question now you will have to determine the gayatri shares in this in the goodwill so gayatri share will be 5 upon 5 by 10 that will be 1 lakh 50 thousand right and this goodwill need to be distributed between the sacrificing partners okay sir and sacrificing partner in this case is Madhu and Vidhi. And the sacrificing ratio is already given two is to three. That means they will uh, they will be sac uh, they will be sharing the loss of uh, the goodwill. Sorry, they will be sacri uh, the goodwill will be distributed between Madhu and Vidhi in the ratio of two is to three. So one lakh fifty thousand into two by five and one lakh fifty thousand into three by five. Got it? Yes, sir. That means for uh, Madhu it will be sixty thousand and for Vidhi it will be ninety thousand. So you will go to the partners capital account and on the credit side of the partners capital account you will write down the uh, on the credit side of the partners capital account you will write down by premium for goodwill account and then you will write down the value of sixty thousand into the column of Madhu and ninety thousand in the column of Vidhi. This is how we will be treat, we will trade the the uh, uh, goodwill of the guy Okay. What is that clear? And you want me to explain it more? Sir, uh, uh, it's okay then. I will do it later. Okay. Any any other thing? Anything else that you want to? Do you have any other doubt or anyone else have any other doubt? Ayan and Mariam, Mariam is still joining. No, sir. <laughs> Mariam is joining now. Okay. No doubts. Okay. All right. So guys, let's now move to the next question. Question number 71. So this is going to take a lot of time. If uh, let's do, let's just do one thing because this question is also based on the previous concept. The in this case, also, we need to prepare the revaluation account, the capital account, and the balance sheet. So, will it be okay if I give this question as a homework to you, or you want me to solve it now? Just, just do one thing. Let's, let's do one thing. First of all, just, let's just read the entire question. And if you are finding it difficult, 
then i'll solve it for you now or, or otherwise i'll give it you give it to you as an homework got it so question says that there are two partners sanjay and vijay sanjay sorry sham and sanjay i'm sorry sham and sanjay and uh, their profit sharing ratio is 2 is to 3 the balance sheet is given asset side on the asset side we have cash in hand cash in bank and we debtors stock furniture building on the liability side we have sundry creditors capital account balances of the sham and sanjay 34050 and 34050 as well for the sanjay then they have admitted one partner for one third share in the future profit and shankar is to bring 30000 as his capital and 20000 as the share of in the goodwill stock and furniture stock and furniture both are required uh, both will be reduced by 10% that means there is a revaluation right and building is to be appreciated by 15000 there is increase in the value of the building provision of 5% is to be made on sundry debtors and there is a doubtful debt of 5% that then that we need to maintain unaccounted accrued commission income 2400 see unaccounted accrued commission is a kind of income accrued commission income is an in, uh, uh, is an income unaccounted accrued commission is an income when unaccounted accrued commission is received it is going to increase the amount of asset and at the same time it will also be recorded on the credit side of the revaluation account since it will increase the amount of profit as well all right so accrued income will be recorded at two places first of all in the revaluation account as well as on the asset side of the balance sheet now question says that uh a debtor whose dues 4800 were written off as bad debt paid 50% in settlement so there was one of the debtor who did not pay 4800 earlier and we have we have written it off considering it as a bad debt but now he is uh he is paying 50% of the amount due that means we are recovering 50% of the bad debt right so amount that you are recovering bad debt that you are recovering is an income and whenever there is an increase in the income that will be recorded on the credit side of the revaluation account then the last point in the question is says that out there is an outstanding rent of 4800 all right outstanding rent is obviously it will be it, it will be recorded in the balance sheet as well as on the debit side of the revaluation account so this is the question just tell me whether i should solve it for you or shall i give you this as an homework sir uh, if we can clear this doubt uh, i'll do it as homework maryam you, you tell me do you want me to solve it now ayan why no one is responding all right anyways let me solve it for you it will take take some time because it is a lengthy question and it requires us to prepare the partners capital account the revaluation account and balance sheet as well so it is going to take a lot of time anyway so let's continue with the question it says we need to prepare the revaluation account so for that purpose we will have to first of all prepare the format for the revaluation the partners capital account and the balance sheet as well so let's start with that so first of all the revaluation i'm sure that everybody is able to recall how do we prepare the revaluation account no? the revaluation account have two sides the debit and the credit side then we need to prepare the partners capital account also
All right, guys, we are done with the format of the revaluation, partners, capital account, and the balance sheet. Now we can start recording the items one by one. So the first adjustment in the question says that Shankar is to bring thirty thousand as his capital, right? Shankar is to bring thirty thousand as his capital and twenty uh, thousand as goodwill, which is to remain in business. So we are assuming that he is bringing the capital and the amount of goodwill in cash. You can also presume that he is bringing the capital and the goodwill in in uh, by by way of bank balance or the check. But for the sake of simplifying the question, I have just assumed that he is bringing the amount in cash. So that means his account is going to be credited by thirty thousand of capital. So we just need to be recorded in the partners capital account, right? So we'll go to the partners capital account and write down by. By cash. This is the cash that Shankar is bringing in by way of his by way of capital contribution. So capital that he is bringing in is thirty thousand. So I'll go to the credit side of the partners capital account account and write down thirty thousand into the Shankar's column. Okay. Then the second adjustment in the question says that. So we will talk about the treatment of the goodwill later. Okay, let's just do, let's just do one thing. Let's let's just treat the goodwill right now. So treatment of goodwill for the treatment of goodwill, let's do the calculation here. Let's make a working note. Premium for goodwill that Shankar is bringing in. Premium for goodwill is twenty thousand, right? And this need to be distributed between the sacrificing partner, and the general entry for this will be premium for goodwill account debit to sacrificing partners account. And sacrificing partners in this case is Sanjay and Shaman Sanjay. So this will be distributed between Shyam and Sanjay in their sacrificing ratio. Shyam and Sanjay. And since their old ratio, old ratio was two is to three, so that their sacrificing ratio will remain same. That will be two is to three. So that means Shyam is going to get two two by five out of it, and uh, he will be getting three by five. So that means twenty thousand into two by five equals to eight thousand, and twenty thousand into three by five equals to twelve thousand. Right. So it means that their Shyam and Sanjay's account need to be credited by eight and twelve thousand. So we'll go to the partners' capital account, and on the credit side, we'll write down by. Premium for goodwill. Shyam account will be credited by eight thousand, and Sanjay account will be credited by twelve thousand. Got it, everyone? Is this clear? Yes or no? Both these yes, and adjustments are clear, na? Eben, Ayan, Mariam. Moving on to the next item, stock and furniture are to be reduced by ten percent. So stock, look at the value of the stock. The stock is eighteen thousand, and furniture is at forty four hundred. Both the values are needed to be reduced by ten percent. So when stock will reduce by ten percent, that means there is going to be reduction by eighteen hundred, and furniture is also going to be reduced by ten percent. That means there will be reduction in the value of the furniture by four forty. So we'll go to the Partners, oh uh, sorry, to the revaluation account this time, and since the value of the asset are reducing, decreasing, therefore we will go to the debit side of the revaluation account and write down to stock. Stock is reducing by ten percent, and ten percent of eighteen thousand is eighteen hundred. And furniture value of furniture is also reducing by ten percent. Ten percent of forty four hundred is four hundred and forty. 
all right so this is this will be the treatment of the reduction in the value of the stock and furniture next building is to be appreciated by 15000 building is to be appreciated means there is an increase in the value of the building so whenever the value of the asset is increases we record that on the debit side on the credit side of the revaluation account so that means increase in the building will be recorded on the credit side of the revaluation account all right then the, there is next item provision of 5% is to be made on sundry debtor now see Look at the value of these debtors. The value of the debtor is currently at fifty five hundred, and on fifty five hundred, we need to make a provision of five percent. So, tell me, how does it going to affect the value of the sundry debtor? Because of the provision being made at five percent, whether it is going to increase the value of the sundry debtor, or will it go, will it reduce the overall value of the sundry debtors? Tell me. उटफुल At the rate five percent, five percent of fifty five hundred will be five percent of fifty five hundred will be two hundred and seventy five. All right. Then, then the next thing, then there is item E says that an accrued, unaccounted accrued commission income of rupees twenty four hundred. I have told you that this is an income, and because there is, it says that the that it was the unaccounted accrued commission income that means it was not earlier it was not taken into consideration even though it is an income but it is not taken into consideration in the accounting and since it is it is an unaccounted income we and so therefore we will have to add it now into the overall profit of the firm so unaccounted accrued commission will be Taken to the revaluation account on the credit side, so we'll write down by accrued income. Accrued income of rupees twenty four hundred will be recorded on the credit side of the revaluation account. And accrued income at the same time, this will also be recorded on the balance sheet on the asset side. Next thing in the question is, our debtor whose dues of forty eight hundred were written off as a bad debt. So, forty forty eight hundred were earlier treated as a bad debt. Now, fifty percent of such bad debt is being recovered. That means it is an income. By we'll write down by recovery of bad debt. By recovery of bad debt is a profit recovery of bad debt. Recovery of bad debt. How much it is? Uh, it will be uh, total bad debt is of forty eight hundred, but fifty percent is getting recovered. So twenty four hundred is we are recovering. We are able to recover twenty four hundred out of the forty eight hundred. Fifty percent of forty eight hundred will be twenty four hundred. I guess, right? Alexander, is that clear to you and everyone else? Yes, sir, it's clear. It's clear. Then it says that there is an outstanding rent. Rent. so outstanding rent see you can see that earlier outstanding rent was not recorded were was not shown in the balance sheet so if it is it if it was not shown in the balance sheet that means it is a new liability which were not taken into consideration while preparing the balance sheet so that means there is an increase in the liability overall liability right if any liability is increasing it is a kind of loss and there it will be recorded on the Debit side of the revaluation account. So we'll write down two outstanding rent. Uh, 
outstanding rent will be 4800 outstanding rent is a liability this will be shown under the revaluation account on the debit side as well as on the in the balance sheet also okay now we need to find out the profit of the firm profit of the partners so we'll write down to profit transfer to so for that purpose we will have to first of all total the credit side of the revaluation account that will be 15000 Plus twenty four hundred plus twenty four hundred. This will be nineteen thousand eight hundred. And out of nineteen thousand eight hundred, we will subtract eighteen hundred out of it. We will subtract four forty out of it. We will subtract two hundred and seventy five out of it, and forty eight hundred out of it. So the profit will be twelve thousand four hundred and eighty five. Twelve thousand four hundred and eighty. And this twelve thousand four hundred and eighty-five will be distributed between between Shyam and Sanjay in their profit sharing ratio. So Shyam and Sanjay. So out of twelve thousand four hundred and eighty-five, Shyam is going to get two by five. That means two upon five. This will be four nine nine four. And remaining amount that will be twelve four eight five. That will be seven four nine one. This will be transferred to the Sanjay's account. So we'll go to the partners capital account now. Now and write down by devaluation account by devaluation account. Shyam nine four. And seven four nine one for Sanjay. Got it, everybody. Alexander, Mariam, Abin, Ayan, all of you tell me: Is this clear or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's talk about the remaining adjustment in the question. So moving on to the. Oh, I think the, the every adjustment is done. There is no other adjustment left in the question. Okay, so we just need to record the opening capital balances of the partners and the partners capital account. So we'll go to the partners capital account and write down their opening balances. So we'll write down by balance BD. By balance BD will be how much? Opening balances were three four zero five zero, three four zero five zero, and three four zero five zero for Sanjay. Got it? Is this clear? Yes, sir. And I don't think there is any other thing left to be treated in the question. I think everything is done. All we need to do is find out the closing capital balances of the partner. so let's let's do that c40 50 plus Eight thousand plus four nine nine four. The credit side of the sham is four seven zero double four. And uh, let's total the credit side value of Sanjay as well. Three four zero five zero plus twelve thousand plus seven four nine one. This will be five three five four one. And in case of Shankar, it will be thirty thousand only. And since there is no other value on the credits on the debit side of the partners capital account, so this will be their closing capital balances as well. So I'll, I'll write down two three four zero five zero. 
balance carried down CD. And their closing balance will be same as their credit side balances. That will be 47044 53541 and 30,000. And when you will totally debit side of the partner's capital account, this will obviously tell you with the credit side of the partner's capital account 53541. Tell me, everybody, is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everyone, is it clear? Abin, Ayan. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So now we can move to the balance sheet segment. In the balance sheet, first of all, let's let's just write down the value of the uh, their capital balances. So their capital will be. Their capital account. For. Sham, Sanjay, and uh, what is the name of the new partner? Shankar. Okay. So Shankar's capital was thirty thousand. That is what he brought into the business, huh? And the the closing capital of Sham and Sanjay is five four seven zero four four seven zero double four and. Five three five four one. Let's total these value and write down the final figure in the amount column. That will be four seven zero double four plus five three five four one plus thirty thousand. It will be one lakh thirty thousand five hundred and eighty five one three zero five hundred and eighty five. Right. And now look at the balance sheet. We had cash in hand 710 earlier. Now on the asset side, we will have cash 710. That was the initial earlier figure, the original, the opening value. Now we have a capital of rupees 30,000 that Shankar is bringing in the business. As well as he is also bringing twenty thousand by way of goodwill. So the so the no, now the total amount of cash will be. And also one more thing. Uh, okay, let's let's just do this. Twenty plus thirty plus seven one zero. That will be fifty thousand plus seven hundred and ten. That is five zero seven one zero. Tell me if this is clear or not. The calculation of cash is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, now look at the other values on the in the balance sheet asset side. We have cash at bank, 11,925. So it will remain unchanged. Cash at bank, 11,495. Eleven thousand nine to nine twenty five. Eh? All right. Now, the next thing is this: is, is the sundry debtor. Sundry debtor is fifty five hundred, and we have made a provision of five percent as well. So fifty five hundred, and we need to subtract two hundred and seventy five out of it. Debtors. So the value of debtor will be reduced. Huh? debtors will be 5500 and we need a provision so the provision need to be subtracted out of the value of the debtor so provisions will be reduced that is 275 and after subtracting it we will get 5500 minus 275 we will get 500 5225 right everyone is this clear yes or no Yes. Okay, and the and then there is uh, stock as well. Stock was at earlier it was at eighteen thousand. Stock 
eighteen thousand. But there is a there is a reduction in the value of the stock by ten percent. So eighteen thousand minus eighteen hundred. We need to record the value of the stock after reducing ten percent. So eighteen thousand minus eighteen hundred will be how much? This will be sixteen thousand two hundred. And the value of the furniture is also reduced by ten percent. The furniture were earlier, furnitures were earlier at forty four hundred, and we need to subtract ten percent out of it. That means four forty out of it. So forty forty four hundred minus four forty will be three nine six zero. Got it, everyone? Is this clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. And yes. the value of the building also appreciated by fifteen thousand. That means the new value of the building will be fifty-five thousand. Forty thousand plus fifteen thousand. This will be fifty-five thousand. Done. And then one accrued income was also there. As I told you, accrued income is an asset. so this will also be shown under the balance sheet on the asset side accrued commission income of rupees how much it was i just forgot it uh, let me just check it was 2400 right so 2400 and on the liability side there is an outstanding rent as well that we need to record because question says that we have outstanding rent outstanding outstanding rent of 4800 need to be recorded on the liability side right i don't think we have we we missed anything in the question i have recorded all the items on the revaluation partners capital account and the balance sheet and i think our balance sheet balance sheet should tally now okay one more thing is yet to be uh, it is left to be written that is sundry creditor 12435 12435 now we will tally the balance sheet and most probably our balance sheet should tally so let's just total the asset side first of all 50710 Eleven nine twenty five plus five two two five plus sixteen thousand two hundred plus three nine six zero plus fifty five thousand plus twenty four hundred. So the balance is one lakh forty five thousand four twenty five four twenty one four five four twenty. And just hope that we should get the same value on the asset side as well. One three zero five eight five. Plus forty eight hundred plus twelve thousand four hundred and thirty five, and we are having a mismatch here. One four seven eight two zero. One four seven eight two zero, and now we will have to. I think we are missing something here. One four five. Two two zero twenty four hundred. Just a minute. I think we are making some mistakes on this. Anyone else is able to spot the mistake? Sir, uh, sir, how will recovery of bad debts be treated? That is twenty four hundred rupees. Recovery of bad debt is an income. This is it. It okay, will sir. only affect the revaluation account. It will no way. It is no way going to affect the debtors. Okay. Sir. Okay, unaccounted accrued commission income of rupees twenty thousand twenty four hundred to be provided, sir. 
okay i think we are making a mistake here Un unaccounted accrued commission income 2400 to be provided for basically means we have we received 2400 by way of accrued commission income so since we already received this and it is not it is no more pending then we cannot consider it as an asset right since the question is saying that we have received 2400 it says that an accounted accrued income commission in an un accrued uh, uh, unaccounted accrued commission income of rupees 2400 to be provided for basically means to be provided for means we are receiving 2400 so if we are we have received 2400 that means it is no more due and if it is no more due we cannot treat this as an asset and cannot show under the balance sheet this can this should only be shown under the revaluation account this cannot be shown under the balance sheet so what we will do we will just remove it from here but i think it will further create a problem na because our balance on the creditor the liability side will increase Just do the calculation one more time. Sorry. One three zero five eighty five plus forty eight hundred plus twelve thousand four hundred thirty five. One four seven eight two zero. Five zero seven one zero plus eleven thousand nine hundred and twenty five plus two hundred plus three nine six zero plus fifty five thousand four hundred one four four one four five four two zero. Huh. Uh, all right, guys. Guys, see, uh, I'm not able to spot the mistake right now. I think we are having an imbalance in the balance sheet by, uh, by twenty four hundred. I need to check the solution. I think I have made a mistake somewhere. It is. It must be a small mistake, and therefore I'm not able to spot the mistake as of now. So, all right, just just skip skip uh the question at this point. I'll I'll. I'll be solving it in the next class. I'll have to check it. Uh, let me. I don't know why there I'm making a mistake. Anyways, just, let's just uh, skip this question at this point. Uh, I'll be telling you what mistake we have made. I'll help you. Tally the balance sheet in the next class, but for the time being, just just record all these values, just write down all these things as it is, as whatever I have done here, just record it as as it is, and whatever the uh, uh, whatever is causing a difference in the balance sheet, I'll help you with that in the next class. Right now, I'm not able to find any mistake in the solution. There must be there must be some mistake. I'm not denying or uh, denying that. There must be some mistake, but right now I'm not able to find that. So for the for now, you can just skip this at this point only, and we'll move to the next 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 question. Is it okay, everyone? Okay, sir. Okay, everybody. 
I have written this down. Balance sheet prepared, partners capital account, revaluation account, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Mariam, you want me to scroll up? Mariam, you want you still want me to scroll up? Uh, tell me which section you want me to scroll to. You want me to show the partners capital account or the revaluation account? Revaluation, okay. Just do it quickly. Done, Maria. Okay. All right, guys. So this was all about admission of partner. And okay, now we'll talk about the retirement of partner. All right. So retirement is what? Retirement is a situation wherein a person, one of the partner, is leaving the partnership because of there could be any fact. Sorry. Yeah, if a person reaches a particular age, he won't be unable. He's unable to do that. Yeah. If uh, there could be various factor, one of the reason could be he have attained a certain age, and because of which he is not willing to, or he have to retire because he have attained a certain age, or there could be any other reason also, personal reasons or or business reasons or anything. basically retirement is a situation wherein a person is leaving the business leaving leaving the partnership right and reason could be reason is not that important reason could be anything we'll talk about the reasons later uh, while we discuss the uh, uh the theoretical aspect of the chapter we'll talk about that later but for now retirement of partner basically means a situation wherein a person is retiring or leaving the partnership business now when it comes to retirement we can be asked about the calculation of the profit sharing ratio when a person is retiring uh, the question may requires us to find out the new profit sharing ratio after the retirement of a of a particular partner so in today's session we'll talk about how to find out the new profit sharing ratio of the partners whenever uh the existing partners retires out of the business all right so let's uh, understand that through one question let's start with 100 and question 119 it says that a b and c were partners sharing profit in the ratio of 1 by 2 2 by 5 1 by 10 we need to find out the new ratio of the remaining partners if c retires question is very simple there are three partners their existing ratio is One by two, two by five, and one by ten. That means so if we equalize their bases, so we will be able to determine their profit sharing ratio. Two by five and one by ten. Their existing profit ratio is this, right? So just to equalize their bases, let's multiply it by five, and let's multiply it by two. Okay, so we will get five upon ten. Is to four upon ten is to one upon ten, right? Everyone, this is the yes sir. ratio of the partner. This is the existing ratio of the partner. And question is saying that one of the partners retires out of the out of the form. One of the partner leaves the and who is retiring? C is retiring. That means this is the ratio of A, B, and C. And if if C retire, and question doesn't tells you anything. Question doesn't tells you about who is going to take over the. C's proportion of share question is silent about that. Then in such a situation, the new profit sharing ratio will be will be the ratio of the remaining partner. That means we will will simply cut out his ratio. His ratio will be five by ten and four by ten. That means five is to four. This is it. 
you getting my point what i'm saying is that whenever a person retires from the business and question does not tells about tells that who is going to get the share uh, uh, the proportion of share that he was acquiring then in such a situation the new profit sharing ratio will be same as earlier cutting out the uh, uh, the ratio of the c that means it will be 5.5 5 by 9 sorry 5 by 9 and 4 by 9 that is 5 of 5 is to 4 the new ratio will be 5 is to 4 what is this clear yes sir. yes sir okay so this was the simple question let's move to the next one okay now it says that 120 is saying that there are there were three partners see in the, in the both the see question 120 have two cases a and b in the a segment it says that shiv and mohan and hari were partners in a firm sharing profit in the ratio of 5 is to 4 is 5 is to 5 is to 4 mohan retired and his share share was divided equally between shiv and hari all right we need to find out their profit sharing ratio after the retirement of hari all right so and quite, what what else what else this question telling us that mohan retired and his share is divided equally between shiv and hari so how do we find out the new profit ratio profit sharing ratio in this case would you be will you be able to solve this question alexander okay, and everyone else just try it once and then i'll help you i'll show you the solution as well Excuse me, sir. Yes, please, sir. Sir, uh, if uh, Mohan retires, then that means the two point five uh, share will go to both of them, and you just add. Sorry, if if who is retiring? Mohan. 
Mohan is retiring. Okay, so when Mohan retires, uh, his share will be divided like two point five, like that. And two point five. Why? Why two point five? Uh, two. It will be distributed point... between Shiv and Hari in the equal proportion, na? Right? Okay. Okay. Sir, can you solve this question? Yes, Evan, just, we just wait for a while so that other could solve it. Otherwise, if no one is able to solve it, I'll solve it for you. Yes, no. You should at least try to solve it on your own now once. If you are yes. not able to solve it, I'll, I'll be solving it for you. Anyways. Yes, sir. Right. <clears throat> Done, Alexander, Mariam, Ayan. Then everyone? No, sir. Could you solve it, please? Okay. All right. See, this is how we will solve it. First of all, see the old ratio of the partners are given. Na? 5, 5, 5 is to 5 is to 4. That means old ratio was 5 by 14, 5 by 14, and 4 by 14. Is that right? Yes, sir. Is that okay? And now question is saying us that Mohan is retiring from the business. So Mohan's share was 5 by 14. And this will be shared between the remaining partners in the equal ratio. That means Shiv is going to get half of the share and Hari will be getting half of it. So 5 by 14 into 1 by 2. And 5 by 14 into 1 by 2 distributed between Shiv and Hari. Is that correct? Is it is it clear, guys? 5 by 14 into 1 by 2 and 5. We are distributing the share in the equal ratio between Shiv and Hari. Therefore, multiplying 1 by 2 for Shari, uh, Shiv as well as Hari. Tell me if it is clear or not. Yes, sir. It's clear. It's clear. So, multiplying 5 into 1, we will get 5 and 14 into 2, we will get 5 by 28. And similarly, 5 by 28 for Hari as well. Now, to determine their new profit sharing ratio, we will add their gaining gaining share into the existing share. So their existing share was 5 by 14. And the, they have gained after the retirement of Mohan, they have gained 5 by 20. Right. And adding 5 by 14 and 5 by 20, you will get 15 by 28. Is that clear? You want me to show the, you want me to show the calculation for it? Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
or is it clear it's clear now sir it's clear and again for in case of hari hari is exists, uh, currently sharing 4 by 14 and uh, uh he, he is gaining 5 by 28 that means his share will be 13 by 28 so the new profit sharing ratio is 15 is to 15. got it is that clear yes or no sir hari uh, 4 by 14 by, Hari's share was four by forty. Yeah, it, it was already given in the question. Five by five is to five is to four. That means Hari's share was five, five, four by fourteen currently, and he is also gaining five by twenty eight from Mohan. So his total share will be five, four by fourteen plus five by twenty eight equals to thirteen by twenty eight. So eventually, the proper, uh, the new profit sharing ratio between Shiv and Hari will be fifteen to thirteen. Is it clear to you? Okay. <clears throat> yes or no? Yes, sir. It's clear. It's clear. Okay. So all right. So this is this was all about one hundred and twenty. Uh, now we will. I'm, I'm giving you a few questions for your homework. Just try these questions before uh, attending sir, the next session. Sorry. Sir, can you show the solution that one uh, twenty is only last? Do it quickly. Done. Done. It's not done. Done. Please take this screenshot of the questions. You need to solve this question in your homework. One twenty one. Then one twenty two. And one twenty three. All these questions are your homework. Done, everyone. So this is it for today's class. You can leave the session now. Mariam, Alexander, Abdul. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye. bye.